Hi everyone, welcome to lecture number 31, the first lecture on labor market discrimination. In our last lecture, we discussed about wage structure and wage distribution in the economy. We discussed about the inequality, why inequality occurs in the economy. Also, we try to measure inequality through Gini coefficient and Lorentz curve. So, we have seen that there is a positive correlation between human capital investments and the ability, ability of the workers, which implies that the waste distribution is positively skewed so that workers in the upper tail of the waste distribution gets a disproportionately large share of the income. We have also seen that uh, how the Gini coefficient measures the degree of inequality in an income distribution of an economy. We have also seen this wage dispersion among the workers. We have seen that how it transmits from one generation to another generation because the parents they care about the well-being of their children and they invest in their children's human capital. So, we have seen the typical intergenerational correlation which shows some degree of movement of the regression towards the mean, which means uh, the wage gap between any two families, it narrows across generation. In this lecture, we will discuss about the labor market discrimination. This is one of the important area of labor market. So far, we have analyzed how differences in the characteristics of jobs or the skills of the worker that generates waste dispersion in a competitive labor market. Now, we will discuss that the differences in the earnings, the wages and the employment opportunities may arise even among the equally skilled workers employed in the same job. So, it is simply because the workers race, gender, national origin, sexual orientation or other seemingly irrelevant characteristics which create some kind of differences in the earnings and the employment opportunities among the workers even if they are equally skilled and the job description is same. So, these differences are often attributed uh, to the labor market discrimination. This discrimination occurs when the participants in the marketplace takes into account such factors like race, gender while making the decision and economic exchanges. For instance, we can say the employer might care about the gender of the workers they hire. Sometimes it happens that the employees might concern about the race of their co-workers. Further, sometimes it may happen that the customers might take into account the race and gender of their seller. So, the discrimination happens from the end of the employer, it may happen from the point of view of the employees, it can happen from the point of view of the customers. Although economists have little to say about the psychological root of this prejudice, we can easily interpret this type of behavior in terms of the language of economics, the cost benefit. So, the cost and the benefits of an economic exchange depends on the color, gender, race, ethnicity of the persons those who are involved in these exchanges. Oftenly in the labor economics, the gender wage discrimination is widely studied. This gender wage discrimination uh, recognized in the field of labor economics, it refers to the phenomena where women are less paid than the men for performing the same work or the work of equal value. So, this is often referred as the gender pay gap. While there are various factors that can attribute to this gender pay gap like uh, differences in education, experience, occupational choices. However, studies constantly show that 
a significant proportion of the gap cannot be explained by these factors and is attributed to some degree of discrimination in terms of gender. So, discrimination in labor market uh, refers to the unjust treatment of the individuals based on the characteristics unrelated to their job performance and qualifications. So, this can be manifested uh, in various forms. It can affect hiring, it can affect the promotion, career growth, it can affect wages and other employment conditions. Let us discuss about some of the types of discrimination that happens in the labor market. First and foremost uh, form of discrimination is the gender discrimination. Gender discrimination occurs when employees or the job applicants are treated unfairly on their basis of gender. This can include uh, wage discrimination, this can include hiring biases, promotion barriers. So, wage discrimination among women often earns uh, less than the men for performing the same job. It has been observed that women may be less likely to be hired for certain roles, especially in the male dominated industries. It has also been seen that women may face a glass ceiling, an invisible barrier that prevents them from reaching the higher level positions in their career. It creates some kind of promotion barriers. So, gender discrimination is a crucial aspect in the labor market. Further, workers are discriminated on the basis of their race, ethnicity. So, racial and ethnic discrimination involves unfair treatment based on the race or ethnicity, which includes also the hiring discrimination, which includes the wage disparities, promotion and job segregations. Also, it leads to sometimes uh, workplace harassment. So, minority candidates may be less likely to be called for interview or hired. So, create some kind of hiring discrimination. People of color often earn less than their white counterparts leads to some kind of wage disparities. Further, minorities uh, might be passed over for uh, promotion or steered into lower paying less prestigious positions in the labor market. Sometimes the work environment becomes hostile or intimidating uh, which relates to uh, some kind of workplace harassment based on the race or ethnicity of the workers. Further, workers face discrimination as per their age. Age discrimination occurs when the employees or the job applicants are treated unfavorably because of their age. This is often directed as uh, the older workers, but can affect the younger workers also. There could be some kind of hiring biases like old applicants may be overlooked in favor of younger candidates when they apply for certain jobs. For promotion and training, old workers may be denied some promotion or professional development opportunities. Employers might face some kind of pressure and they can pressurize the old employees to retire early. So, these are different uh, types of uh, discrimination which happens on the basis of ease of the worker. Further, the discrimination can be in the form of disability, disability discrimination which involves unfair treatment individuals uh, with their some kind of disability which they have in terms of physical. Sometimes this uh, discrimination is there in the form of sexual orientation, gender identity, there are religious discriminations are also there in the labor market. Often uh, it has been seen that discrimination happens based on the workers national origin. In a globalized world, workers migrate from one place to another the, across the state boundaries, across the country boundaries. So, discrimination based on national origin affects the individuals who are treated unfavorably because they are from a particular country or a particular part of the world or because their ethnicity or ascent. So, this kind of discrimination also includes in the form of hiring and wage gaps. 
immigrants or individuals they perceive to be from a certain region may face find hiring biases or wage disparities with the background of different national origin they face some kind of workplace harassments based on their behavior promotion barriers are also there which limits the career advancement of these immigrants the individuals from certain national backgrounds there is a intersectional discrimination happens in the labor market it is not just one discrimination happens in isolation with the others so intersectionalities are there intersectional discrimination recognize that the individuals may face multiple and overlapping form of discrimination simultaneously for instance a woman of uh, uh, color may experience both gender and racial discrimination so the degree of discrimination and the severity of discrimination increases in uh, when the individual faces multiple layer of uh, discrimination in the labor market so while addressing this uh, discrimination the certain rules has to be taken into consideration legislation and policies are there diversity and inclusion programs are there training and education plays a significant role in addressing discrimination in the labor market monitoring and enforcement of certain laws also lead to reduce certain amount of discrimination in the labor market so while combating discrimination in the labor market it requires a comprehensive strategy which includes strong anti discriminatory laws and policies and initiatives to promote diverse and inclusive workplace further regular training on discrimination and diversity of the employees and the management is required to reduce discrimination in the workplace however the vigilant enforcement of anti discriminatory laws and policies which includes regular audits and reporting the mechanism will lead to uh, reduce the discrimination in the workplace so all these aspects has to be taken into consideration simultaneously and in a holistic approach when we talk about wage discrimination wage discrimination can have several and severe significant economic implications the implications could have been at the level of individuals and also at the aggregate level in the society the important implication is the loss of talent and productivity so when individuals are less paid solely based on the factors such as gender race and other characteristics which is unrelated to their job performance then it can lead to uh, the talented individuals they are being discouraged uh, from entering certain professions or staying in the workforce so this could lead to a loss of talent and can hamper the productivity and innovation which will ultimately affect the economic growth further the discrimination leads to some kind of reduction in the consumer spending wage discrimination can contribute to income inequality with certain groups earning less than the others while they are doing the same work so this can result in reduced purchasing power for affected individuals and their families leading to uh, lower consumer spending and demand so since consumer spending is a key driver of economic activities this can have broader implications for overall economic development and growth in the economy further discrimination may lead to weaker workforce participation or labor force participation so discriminatory pay practices can discourage certain groups like women or minority populations from participating a fully in the workforce so when they face some kind of uh, uh, discrimination they feel alienated they keep themselves out of uh, the workforce or the labor force so this can result in a smaller labor force and reduce economic output further if the individuals feel that they are undervalued or unfairly treated or unfairly compensated they may be less motivated to engage fully in their workplace and leading to uh, decrease in the productivity so discrimination has significant impact on uh, lowering the workforce and labor force participation rate further 
this discrimination in the labor market can lead to uh, poverty and inequality. It can intensify the poverty and income inequality within the society. Because when certain groups consistently earn less for the same work, they are more likely to face financial hardship and struggle to meet the basic needs. So, this can uh, perpetuate the cycles of poverty and uh, limit the opportunity for social mobility, which ultimately widens the gap between the rich and the poor in the economy, which will lead to the income inequality. Further, it could have negative impact on GDP. Studies have shown that uh, reduction in the wage gap and promoting uh, uh, pay equity can have a positive effect on GDP. For example, if you go through the report by McKinsey Global Institute, which has estimated that advancing women's equality in the workplace could add 12 trillion dollar to the global GDP by 2025. So, that is why if you look at the sustainable development goals centered towards the uh, reducing this income inequality and reducing the discrimination. Further, the cost of litigation and enforcement uh, when some discrimination happens in the uh, workplace addressing these uh, waste discrimination through legal means such as lawsuits or regulatory enforcements can occur some co cost for both the employers as well as for the governments. So, the legal proceedings, settlements and the compliance efforts can be financially burdensome and time consuming which may lead to overall uh, reduction in the productivity of the economy. So, legal frameworks in many countries prohibits uh, the wage discrimination based on certain protected characteristics like gender, race. However, despite of these legal protections, wage discrimination still persists in a very subtle form. So, efforts to address this uh, wage discrimination often involves both legal as well as policy measures and initiatives aimed at raising awareness, promoting transparency in the pay practices and encouraging employers to adopt a fair and equitable compensation policies. Additionally, fostering a culture of uh, diversity, equity and inclusion in the workplace is crucial for tackling this waste discrimination and promoting equal opportunity for all employees. This is the central focus of uh, sustainable development goal. So, overall waste discrimination not only undermines the principles of fairness and equity, but also has a tangible economic consequences that can impede economic growth and prosperity. So, addressing waste discrimination requires concentrated efforts from policymakers, employers and the society as a whole to promote fair and equitable treatment to the workplace. So, by understanding and addressing different forms of discrimination, organizations can uh, foster a fair and more equitable labor market. If you look at uh, the gender wage gap, we have uh, here taken the data from uh, OECD. Now, you can see countries with color like Japan, Canada, United States, Germany, France, Denmark, Italy. So, the wage, gender wage gap varies significantly across the countries. You can see in Korea it is uh, more than 30 percent, where you can see it is Belgium and in Italy, Norway, it is less than 5 percent. So, gender wage uh, uh, differences or the discrimination on the basis of uh, gender is a widespread phenomena and it is there across the globe. However, the degree of intensity is different, but it is a persistence problem and it exists across the countries. So, when we talk about this uh, female male wage ratio and the international differences in female male wage ratios and employment rates, it varies uh, widely across the countries and regions and are influenced by uh, multitude of factors which includes economic development, cultural norms, labor market policies, educational systems and legal frameworks. 
So, let us discuss about that why there is a wide range of variations are there in the form of uh, across the countries uh, in the form of gender uh, pay gap. First and foremost factor is the economic factor, economic development. Generally, more developed countries tend to have a smaller gender wage uh, gap and higher female labor force participation rates compared to less developed countries. So, this is often attributed to the factors such as increased in the access to education, health care and the greater economic opportunities for the women in the developed countries and there is a stronger legal protection against discrimination. Further, cultural norms and social norms plays a significant role in uh, wage uh, pay gap across gender, across the countries. So, cultural attitude towards the gender roles and women's participation in the workforce very significantly uh, uh, observed across the countries and the cultures. So, in some societies, the traditional gender roles uh, may discourage women from pursuing careers or entering uh, certain fields leading to lower employment rates and widening this wage uh, gap. Further, labor market policies, active labor market policies play a significant role. Government policies and regulations related to labor market practices including minimum wage laws, anti-discrimination uh, legislations, uh, parental leave policies and child care supports. These can have a significant impact on the female male wage differential and employment rate across the countries. So, different countries have different uh, uh, practices uh, in terms of uh, uh, different uh, legislations. So, countries with uh, progressive policies that promotes gender equality and uh, work life balance tend to have more narrow gender wage gap and higher female labor force participation in their economy. Further, education and skill plays a significant role in lessening this uh, gender pay gap. So, gender disparities in education and skill training can affect women's access to higher uh, paying jobs and opportunities for the career advancement, which in turn can contribute to the difference in the wage ratio and employment rates. So, efforts uh, uh, to improve this educational opportunities for girls and the women can help narrow down this gap over time. Further, the occupational segregation, occupational segregation in terms of where uh, the men and women are concentrated in different industries and occupations. Some occupations are more male oriented, some occupations are more female oriented. So, this segregation of occupations, different industries and uh, in different occupations uh, is a major contributor to this gender uh, differential. So, male dominated fields often offer higher wages and uh, better opportunities for advancement while female dominated fields may be undervalued and underpaid. In 21st century, globalization and trade cannot be ignored playing some role in a labor market discrimination. Economic globalization and trade liberalization can have a mixed effect on gender wage differentials and employment rates. While increase in the trade and foreign investment can create some new job opportunities for women in export oriented industries, they can also see some kind of inequalities by reinforcing this gendered pattern of employment and wage discrimination. So, in one aspect it is creating some kind of jobs, in the other side it can lead to some kind of inequalities in the participation in the jobs by the uh, male and female. Certain social welfare policies plays a significant role in uh, gender discrimination. So, the presence of robust social welfare policies such as universal health care, unemployment benefits and social assistance programs can help to mitigate the negative economic consequences of this wage discrimination and unequal employment opportunities, particularly for marginalized groups. Overall, while addressing this international differences in male female uh, wage ratio, 
the employment rates require a comprehensive approach that encompasses the legal, policy and cultural norms which aims at promoting gender equality, eliminating discrimination and creating an enable environment for the women's full participation in the workforce. In our next lecture, we will discuss about the economics of discrimination and the discrimination coefficient, how we can measure discrimination and what is the impact of economic impact, economic outcomes of uh, discrimination when uh, the agents uh, do some kind of exchanges. Thank you.